Okay, so uh, everything you need to run the Shoreline Digitization script tool is here at github.com slash 2.34 slash Shoreline Digitization Arc Pro. Uh, several folders here. One, this contains the actual code, the python.py uh, script. This is sample data to make it easier for the user to test out the script tool. This is uh, some instructional information, and this is the tool itself. To get all of these files on your own computer, all you need to do is go to the green code button and select download zip. Okay, downloading zip archive. It's about 63 megabytes, so it shouldn't take too long. I'm not going to where that downloaded. And it's a zipped file, so I'm going to unzip it. And there we have it now on our local computer, all those same files uh, that were on GitHub. Now, let's take a look at the tool. The tool is also a zipped files so can extract that and we open up the file and there are hypothetically two ways to uh, access a shoreline tool now one this is an arcgis project file right here and i could open that up and hypothetically um, run the tool that way but i actually run into some issues there and I think it might have something to do with the zipping process and the uploading of uh, this project file to GitHub. So what I would recommend actually is just accessing the ArcGIS toolbox from a project you already have open in ArcGIS Pro. So let's see. I'm going to create a new one here, Shoreline Digitization Demo. Just a blank project, nothing in it whatsoever. But you can see here in the, on the Insert tab, there's an option to insert, insert a toolbox, so Add Toolbox. And we can navigate to the location of um, see not sure if that's the right place or not um, let's go to make sure okay tool here it is now it's a toolbox and we add it okay nothing's gonna happen very um, obviously but we go to View and Catalog Pane, and under our toolboxes, we'll see that we actually have our have added our toolbox. Now, let's take a look. Right-click on that on the script, uh, which is within the toolbox, and then select Properties. The parameters are all in here, um, so I would recommend against uh, changing any of these parameters unless uh, you have some experience with the script tool and uh, want to customize it in your own way. General is just some names and execution. This is important. This is where we um, connect the script itself, the .py file so that it can be run in the script tool. Looks like I've already done that, but there it is right there. Um, that would be within the code folder. And .py file. Okay. Now the script tool is already set up and you would use it just like any other um, ArcGIS tool. So we'll double click it. So I've piecemealed um, this video a little bit. You'll notice now that I'm using an August 9th version of the tool. 
I just made some changes to make it a little more user friendly yet. Um, the simplest way to use the tool is just with two parameters, which is this image raster folder and the output geodatabase where your output will be stored. And that usage may work for 90% of, of users' needs. Um, so if we go to what we downloaded from GitHub, go into our sample data, let's use point radius multiband as our Im input image folder, and output geodatabase, just the geodatabase of our current project. There you go. Run it, and it won't take very long, but I'll pause the video. So the tool is finished running, and it took one minute and 10 seconds. And it'll, of course, take longer if you have more rasters or larger rasters as an input, but it's a fairly fast process. Uh, let's take a look at the output. One thing we can do to see how well our tool did is we add the data, um, the images that the tool analyzed. So let's just add those to our table of contents. And we can take a look at the line feature. Um, this is 2020. Just kind of take a look, visually inspect how good a job at delineating the shoreline the tool actually did. Had a little bit of trouble with some waves here, but on the whole, you see that green line. On the whole, I'd say it did pretty well. We can also look at the polygon output, we look at the attribute table here, and this is based on unsupervised classification since we didn't add any band, band information in the parameters. If we, do, if we don't add those bands, we just get the unsupervised classification output, which is actually pretty good though, due in most, most cases. Um, this is the ocean, so it's not a self-contained water body. If it were, though, then this shape area field would correspond to the surface area of um, the water body that's being analyzed, and uh, you could get some useful information out of that. If you had a DEM of the... Um, floor of the water body, like bathymetry, bathymetry or topobathy, you could get a volume, water bo volume estimate from that. All right, so with the point Reyes sample data, we did a very simple walkthrough of the tool. Now I will uh, walk you through a more complex uh, usage, but also a potentially more powerful usage. If we want to find our tool, you can always find it under the catalog pane. Double click on it again. Um, let's find our data from Sanford Lake. Image raster folder is the four band imagery. This is NAEP or National Agricultural Imagery Program data. So we want to add, in this case, a DEM, a digital elevation model, which is also in the sample data. Click on that folder. Um, being NAEP data, I happen to know that the blue band is four. Green is two, red is one, and near infrared is four, and that NAEP data does not have a short wave infrared band. Let's do this. 
stand for demo of oh, geodatabase, just uh, projects default geodatabase there. Um, now we're looking for the DM table. Here it is. This table has the uh, relationship between the DEM and uh, the input images. So make sure it matches up the proper DEM to the proper image. Open that up. This is a little bit of a quirk of the tool is it forces the user to add the sheet um, rather than the XLS file. This is taking a very long time. There we go. There's a sheet. So I have to actually delete that sheet and just leave it with the XLS or XLSX um, extension. It might be valuable actually at this point to take a look at what the what the Excel file actually looks like. All right, so here's the uh, demo Excel file. We have field headings of image base name, DEM base name, and water level. And if you end up making your own Excel file, these um, field headings need to be exactly like this, uh, case sensitive, otherwise a tool will not be able to read the file. Um, the image base name is based on our input um, rasters here, as you can see here. Tip file, SAN 2018 AOI for band. And the DEM base name is based on our input DEM. Sand DEM clip tip file. And then our water level. These I just these levels I just put in for the sake of uh, demonstration. But basically, this would ideally be based on a ground reference um, measurement of the water level, maybe from a tide station. This is an inland lake, so um, there's not a tide station there, but suffice to say, I just put in some levels that are slightly above uh, the water level um, at the time that the image was taken. So now we can go back to our script tool, this manual threshold. I'm not going to talk too much about that. Suffice to say, um, sometimes inputting a manual threshold, um, land water threshold, will perform better than any of the default algorithms. And so some numbers that I've had success with in the past is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0.3 input exactly in that format. The min water body. So this is if you want to define the smallest water body size that the tool will um, digitize a shoreline for. This could be useful if you have a lot of very small water bodies, little ponds or things that you don't want um, to really slow down the tool. I happen to know in this case, 10,000 square feet is a reasonable water body size um, for the Sanford Lake area. So I included that. I'm going to run the tool and pause the video. Okay, so the tool has finished running. Took longer this time, 18 minutes and 9 seconds. Um, one of the reasons is because there are five rasters in, uh, for the Sanford Lake sample data. 
Plus, we've incorporated DEM, so we've drawn a contour line on DEM. And rather than just using the unsupervised classification algorithm, we have added um, four bands, the bands in the NAEP data. And we've also included some manual threshold algorithms, three of them and a minimum water body size. That's several reasons why it took a little longer to run, but it executed successfully. So let's take a look at the output. Okay, we look at the polygon output. Looks like a bit of a mess. Let's take a little closer look at it. In the attribute table, you can see that we have six um, polygon features that correspond to the six algorithms. One's unsupervised classification, NDWI, um, here with our manual thresholds. That's with the OTSU thresholding. And then this is um, with a band ratio. Uh, that uses the red and blue bands added to the OTSU NDWI. And this is just an algorithm that I uh, toyed around with and found it actually does a fairly good job at excluding um, shoreline and pervious features. Um, here's a little area actually that I could demonstrate that impervious feature exclusion. Um, Unsupervised classification included an area here, whereas this area or this, this algorithm excluded it. Still kind of a mess with all these little polygons in here, but I'll show you a little way to clean that up. Um, since we have this polygon selected, we can go to selection and make a layer from selected features. And select only, display only that selection. And you can see we've got a cleaner shoreline now. There's a couple other things get rid of all those smaller polygons. We can use the buffer tool. Use our selection as the input. And buffer five meters distance unit five. Actually, I think this is, yeah, no, this is in meters, okay. Um, full planar, we'll stick with the defaults here. Run that. Doesn't take very long at all. Updating. Nice and clean, but we've got an extra five meters added here. So we can subtract those five meters. I just do a negative buffer on them. Negative five meters. Run it again. Again, doesn't take very long. Now we've got a nice clean polygon that would, um, if this were a fully enclosed water body, would yield a, a nice. Um, surface area estimation through this shape area field. We can also convert this if we want the shoreline. We can then convert this the polygon to line. I believe, yep, polygon to line tool. 
including those features. Run that. Don't take very long at all. We've got a very nice shoreline there, which we can compare to actually we had our visual data Sanford 2018. One of the reasons I chose this area is it's very complicated actually. Um, it's all sorts of docks in the water, trees along the um, shoreline, impervious surfaces and houses. And the tool still did a pretty good job. And uh, again, that's better results with this custom algorithm than with the unsupervised, unsupervised classification. And if you didn't want to do those extra cleanup steps with the buffering and you were just happy enough with the just, uh, default shoreline output of the tool, just look at those and just somewhat arbitrarily say, let's go with this unsupervised classification. That's going to yield pretty good results most of the time. And again, we just go with the selection, um, here from selected features. And and we'll have only that shoreline from the algorithm or the unsupervised classification al algorithm here. And you see it's done a fairly decent job. We even got the road there. Um, pretty nice little shoreline, I'd say. Now, why did we add the DEM uh, parameters? Take a look. We get this ground reference water level, a contour drawn at the water level that we specified in the uh, Excel table. See, we've got a nice contour drawn slightly above the water level. And this could be useful if we wanted to look at potential shoreline change um, or simulate where the shoreline would be with a certain uh, amount of water level rise. So that could be very useful for flooding um, projections and flood modeling. You'll see here that this actually, um, the, there are a lot of contours, there are 199 contours, and most of those are just kind of noise. So if we want the main contour of the, the shore, we can sort in descending order. And zoom to, Okay, so hold on, it's a little messy here because not just selecting. Okay, there it is. We selected the DEM contour for that side and this other long one will probably be from the other side and it is. And there's a DEM output. 